Good morning and welcome to this morning's devotional from Greenville Street. We trust you've had a peaceful, restful night's sleep and you're now up to face a new day. A new day that lies before you, a new day that is in God's hands. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you have revealed yourself unto us through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, it's another day of grace, another day of mercy. We praise you, Lord, for the night that has gone into eternity. And we just trust, Lord, as we put our faith in you for this day, that you will guide us, you'll direct us. May this day be a blessing to us. And if it is possible, may we be a blessing to others. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our reading this morning is found in Genesis chapter 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir. But a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Prior to this story, we find that there have been four kings who were attacked by five kings from another nation. And these five kings thought they could attack and destroy Sodom and all its people. But they were wrong. They lost the battle and the four kings took Sodom on, took all the belongings from Sodom, all the animals, everything there, and took them off as a success. The next time that Abram heard about that, he heard that and along those things that were taken was his nephew Lot. Lot had been taken with the people of Sodom and taken with the animals and all around there. Now remember at this stage that Abram was late 70s, early 80s. And yet although these four kings with their armies have now taken everything, have defeated five kings and are now on their way to the lands they came from. This late 70s, early 80 year old calls together his household and he has 318 trained men. And he chases after the four kings and all that they've taken with 318 men. And he wins. He defeats them and he brings back all that was taken, especially Lot and what belonged to Lot. And after he comes back, and there's another story between that and what we're reading here, we may someday look at it. The time when on his way back, he makes, meets a man called Melchizedek, a high priest. But that's a story for another day. He brings Lot back and he comes back. And that's when God then comes to him in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your very great reward. Strange words to a man who has just defeated four kings with 318 men. A man who has been totally successful, has brought everything back that was taken. And yet, God sees something on him that he's afraid of. It's not, not a fight. The man has just won a mighty victory. But there's something in his life that God sees. And he says to Abram that, do not be afraid, Aaron. I am your shield and your very great reward. And once he says this to Abram, Abram then comes out with what he is afraid of. And Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? You see, Abram's promise is God gave him a promise, the way over there to start, that one day his descendants would fill the land. 
And I suppose like all the promises of God, you know, when God makes a promise and we hear that promise, we expect it to be answered the next day. But sometimes we expect it to be answered just there and then. But God is more looking. God's promise is yea and amen. God's promise will stand forever. And in God's time, God's promise will be fulfilled. But poor Abraham, he thought it was going to be fulfilled before then. It wasn't. And now he's worried. Because what he sees is that this man and his servant and his household called Eliezer of Damascus, he's going to get all that Abraham has, all the cattle, everything he owns, will belong to this man because he has no descendants. He has no son, he has no nothing. He's worried about this because God told him and he thought he would have had a son. I'm sure Sarah was the same. I'm sure they've waited this four or five years, maybe longer. No son. They expected. And God said he would have descendants. That possibly within days, he might have expected that Sarah would be pregnant and he would be heading towards fatherhood. But no, it hadn't happened. And now God says to him again, Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. I can imagine a look of wonder, maybe disbelief, in this man's face. But he promised that years ago, and it hasn't happened. And so he says, Come on. He takes him outside the scent. He says, Abram, look up. I'm led to believe a night sky in the east is usually pitch black and the stars twinkle like nowhere else on earth. Abram stands there and looks up and there's a sky, millions. As God says, Abram, count them. If you can, he knows he can't. But God's promise is Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. So shall your offspring be. Yes, Abram, you don't have a son now. But one day, your descendants will number like the stars of the sky. And we read those next lines. Abram believed the Lord and he credited to him for righteousness. You see, Abram believed. It took a bit of encouragement. It took maybe God to show him the stars in the sky. But God, gone was the fear. Gone when this, was this fear that he wasn't going to have a son. This fear that it wasn't going to happen. The promise that God had made. But God keeps his promises. But you see, God's promises are for God's people. And there's a lot of people out there and they, they hold on to promises which aren't for them. God does not promise to the people who have rejected him. God does not promise to people who have no interest in him. God's promises are sure and amen to God's people. But only when they're meant for God's people. Some of the promises in the Bible are not meant for the church as a whole. They were meant for the individuals they were given to. Sometimes the church thinks, ah, oh, well, that was promised to so-and-so, and that stands for me. No, not necessarily. So make sure when you stand on the promises of God, you stand on the promises meant for his church, not the promise he gave to individuals. And God keeps his promises. He doesn't promise you health. He doesn't promise you wealth. He doesn't promise you you'll be a success in life. He doesn't promise you a long life. What he does promise you is, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. What he does say also for that is, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and take you unto myself. You see, that promise is worth holding on to. The promise that God says, if we receive his Son as our Saviour, he has gone to prepare a place for us. We are passing through just like Abraham. We don't have a hundred years or 120 years or 300 years. And I said, we will not live forever down here. And a lot of people say, praise the Lord for that. We are passing through. 
But where are you going when you get to the end of this life? When you get to the very end, where are you going? You say, I am going to a place that God has prepared for me. That Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. I can stand on that promise. Can you stand on a promise like that for God? Are you still a stranger? If you're still a stranger, you can change that this morning. All you have to do is get down on your knees. Tell the Lord you're sorry for the life you've lived. Ask him to come in and change it for all eternity. And then I'll meet you one day in that place that God has prepared. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day of grace. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity again to look at your word, to look at this man who had doubts, who had fears, who wasn't too sure if the promise made years before would be still standing. And God reminded him. God shows Abraham again that the promise he made is sure as anything. He shows him the stars in the sky. And his promise stands. Abram, look up. Your generations shall be like the stars in the sky. Abraham believed God. And that's what we have to do with the promises of God, believe him. There's no sense saying, I believe the promises of God and crossing your fingers. It doesn't work. You must believe God 100%. If you're going to trust his promises. As the old hymn sang, it said, standing on the promises of Christ our King. You have to stand on them. Not just keep your fingers crossed, because that'll never work. Stand on the promises of God. And all things become prom- possible to those who believe. Lord, we just pray for us who believe this morning that you'll help us to stand on those promises. And for any who still don't know you, Lord, change their lives, that they may be included in the promises of God. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.